Hello everyone and welcome for a DMS lecture series. Uh, yesterday we have discussed in a previous lecture, we have discussed about the uh, design of impeller, suction, uh, suction pipe and the delivery pipe. So in the impeller, we have seen uh, the number of veins, then uh, uh, bread velocity diagram. Uh, also, uh, we seen uh, the various diameters and the dimensions of the impeller. So moving further, we have to discuss, uh, uh, continue our design. Now today we will discuss about the design of wallet casing. So casing is a very important because uh, it is the outer portion uh, inside which the water can be pressurized and you can look at the segment or cross section view of the volute casing. So here we have a making at some uh, six different regions. Region number one, region two, region three, region four, region five, region six. So at initial stage, uh, the angle with respect to the top tongue is equal to zero. Okay, so it is started when you start to draw and uh, so whenever you draw this line, so this point is make uh, from center of the uh, impeller. When you draw a straight uh, line in between these two points to joining these two points, that angle must be zero. So that is a reference line uh, from which you have to start to draw a geometrical shape of the casing inside. So casing is not purely uh, circular. It is in a continuously increasing in size so that the pressure can be developed. Okay, so here you can see as initial stage, the distance between uh, the impeller and the casing wall is very less. Then it goes increasing as per the change in section. Now the throat section, which is applied in uh, 40 degree apart uh, from the uh, tongue section. Okay, so here that much pore area we are not providing any kind of curve. Okay, so normally, agar aap isko dekhoge, to aisa ye curve aa raha hai, and it goes increasing. The radiuses are ge getting changed. But at a particular distance, now up to this, we can change the radiuses. Okay, but after this point, that is a throat section, and from tongue section, this is a 40 degree. So in that 40 degree, we are not changing anything. So as it is, we are drawing straight lines. Okay. The diameter, outer diameter of pipe has been fixed. So the, we have two points. So we can directly draw and we can make a um, casing design. Okay. So let's see how exactly we can calculate these dimensions, angles, everything. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. To calculating the uh, casing, first we have to find out the diameter of the throat, which is denoted by dt. So, theoretical discharge multiplied by theoretical area into theoretical velocity. So that theoretical velocity at section of the throat and the area also at the section of the throat. So initially we are assuming the uh, theoretical uh, throat velocity is near about 2.32 to uh, sorry 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 pi times of u2. Okay, so considering uh, throat velocity is equal to 0 0.4 times of u2 okay and the value of u2 is 26.15 so the throat velocity is 10.46 meter per second so putting all the values what you get the area 
now here the unknown thing was the area so the area which we have calculated is 2.52 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter square so area of the throat is nothing but pi by 4 dt square so dt is equal to 56.6 meter uh, mm 56.6 mm so this is a constant area we cannot change as we need to maintain other parameters now about the deciding the layout of the cast, uh, casing so following is the basic procedure to draw a layout of any kind of volute casing so first set the actual tongue point set the actual tongue point where the actual casing starting starts this is generally in between uh, 30 degree to 40 degree which is close to the alpha 2 from the throat set. so let tongue in our case is a 40 degree from the throat section which is just shown in a figure then the dividing uh, remaining angle into the number of equal segments so remaining angle is 320 degree so we are doing into the five segments if you want you can go with the three to four segments also but uh, as the number of segments increases uh, you have to get a exact curvatures so that the number of points get increased and you get a perfect profile okay so here we are considering five number of segments uh, so each having a distance angular distance between are 64 degree considering the circular cross section of the volute casing find the diameter of the circle at which of the above the section then draw the profile uh, which is a tangential to all such circles to get a profile of the volute casing jaise abhi maine discuss kiya tha okay so now to we, we have to calculate the dimension of the volute casing so uh, dividing the remaining into five equals that is uh, we get a 64 degree uh, the angle between two segments so now we have to find out the areas of each segment so first one we have already calculated a1 area, uh, uh, area of throat so using that well, area we are uh, calculating the other areas by some empirical relation so a2 is the one fifth of 80 a3 is the two fifth of 80 a4 is the three fifth of 80 a5 is a four fifth of 80 and a6 is equal to 80 so these are the th three segments uh, five six segments which we are divided and according to that their uh, areas we have calculated so a2 a2 is equal to 0 0.504 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter square a3 is 1 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter square a4 is 1.52 1 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter square a5 is 2.02 .02 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter square and the ac 80 we, which we have already calculated that is 2.52 meter cube sorry 10 raised to minus 3 meter square so we have calculated the areas now we need to calculate the diameters of the segments accordingly by using same empirical relations that is uh, d2 is equal to square root of one fifth times of dt so according to that or you can directly calculate based on the area okay so any any method you can calculate so it is it's an easiest method so that's why uh, uh, considering this one so the square root of uh, this uh, one fifth of dt uh, we can get a uh, diameter d2 that's 25.31 so similarly we calculated all the diameters d3 is equal to 35.8 d4 is equal to 34.84 sorry 43.84 d5 is equal to 50.62 and the last dt or uh, d6 is equal to 56.6 mm 
now the angles angles we have well known so you everyone whenever you are going to design you have to make this table because uh, with the each and every section they provide the angle and the diameter so whenever you are try to create a profile or draw a profile at that time you can very easily able to pick the points next one to find out the thickness of that uh, wallet casing which is denoted by small t now we are considering uh, the casing as a pressure vessel because there is a no external pressure apply on the pump whatever the pressure is generated it is an internal one so that is that's why we are considering it is as a pressure vessel so capital d is equal to dt plus d2 plus 40 mm okay so 40 mm we have kicking exceeded uh, so that the diameter should uh, withstand the internal pressure so capital d diameter of the uh, casing d is equal to 430 mm so casing material is a gray cast iron uh, with a grade of 25 referring page page number 1.4 sigma yt design sigma t is equal to 41.67 newton per mm square so sigma t is equal to thrust pressure into d divided by 2t so testing pressure p test testing pressure so this is a testing pressure which uh, actually is a twice of working pressure and working pressure how we can calculate it so p is equal to 2 rho g hm so 2 into 1000 into 9.81 into hm that is 34.9 so working pressure is equal to 684.74 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square so twice of this we can get the testing pressure so testing pressure is equal to 0 0.685 newton mm square so putting all the values what we get the thickness t is equal to 3.53 mm but by considering uh, according uh, for considering the casting purpose or the casting process we need to minimum thickness of the casting should be a 6 mm 5 to 6 mm so we are considering the thickness of casing wallet casing is 6 mm next one the design of bolts so as we are manufacturing casing in two hulls or two part so uh, we need sorry uh, where case uh, uh, manufacturing casing in a single quantity and now the pumps has been connected or sorry, sorry uh, pipes has been connected uh, to the inlet and outlet region so for that uh, we are using bolts bolt joint we are not using any other set uh, so we have to design bolt for that uh, joints only so material for a bolt we are considering c40 which is available in PhD page number 1.9 so tensile strength design strength is 80 newton per mm meter square considering pcd is equal to 450 mm as the diameter of uh, diameter of uh, casing is 430 so extra 20 mm margin we are considering to properly seal the pumps in the form proper way number of bolts we are considering number of bolts are 12 so let's see how much force is acting on each bolt because we don't know the force acting on the bolt so that's why we are cons considering uh, the number of bolts are 12 okay because uh, to engage uh, to minimize the pressure on each bolt we are increasing the number of bolts so force on each bolt is equal to test pressure divided by number of bolts into pi by 4 d uh, pitch circle diameter 
bracket square. So the force on each bolt is 8273.5 Newton. Now bolt are made, uh, the failure mode of the bolt is normally in a tensile failure, which is at the cold diameter of the bolt. So sigma t is equal to F divided by AC. We don't know the diameter of the bolt. So from this equation, we are calculating the diameter of the bolt. So force on each bolt, we know that 8273.5. Uh, then value of design sigma t is 80 mm Newton per mm square. So the area that is 103.42 Newton per mm square. Okay. Now referring the PhD page number 5.42. The standard bolt size based on the area is available is M16 by 2 mm bolt where 2 is a pitch. Now checking these joints for leak proof. Uh, it is very important because uh, if it is not properly leak proof at a particular time interval it will start leakages. So here we are checking for leak, uh, leak proof test. So theoretically we can calculate the pitch circle diameter, circular pitch that is a pi PCD divided by number of bolts. So pi into 450 divided by 12 circular pitch is equal to 107.8 mm. Now condition for to check the leak that the phi times of bolt diameter value of the phi times of the bolt diameter should be greater than that of the circular pitch should be greater than that of the circular pitch let's see what happened so 16 multiplied by pi the value is lesser than the circular pitch value that is 107 uh, 117.8 so it uh, shows that leakage will be take place. To avoid leakage, we are uh, increasing the number of bolt, increasing the number of bolt as we have previously 12 number of bolts, we are increasing to the 18. Now check the circular pitch, circular pitch get reduced now, that is 78.54 and 16 multiplied by 5, that is 80. So in this condition now in this condition the leak will not occur so condition uh, i request all of you just note it properly the circular pitch dimension should be lesser than the five times of the bolt diameter circular pitch di uh, dimension is lesser than the five times of bolt diameter so that the pitch leak uh, leak proof test will be uh, properly we can identify theoretically now next one uh, the design of shaft okay the shaft design is a very uh, important aspect over here because the shaft carries impeller dead weight and all the all the things so we will discuss one by one to determine the force on impeller First of all, we need to calculate the axial forces. So axial forces, you can look at the figure number five, impeller construction, diameter half dh, outer diameter d2, i diameter de. So water is came inside uh, from the i side, which we have already discussed uh, from the side it can be transferred through the, this passage so that the pressure get increased. So the pressure at the starting point is less and at the delivery point it is more, okay, as the, it, it water passes from this passage, okay. So here the pressure will be here and here the pressure will be less. So, <coughs> okay, so the portion between D and D2 is balanced as same pressure 
which is acting on the both side of the impeller whereas the portion between de and d2 will be subjected to axial thrust okay so the axial force is equal to pd minus ps into pi by 4 de square into dh square we are considering the pd is 15 mwc that is a meter of water column so 15 into 9.81 into 1000 so pd is equal to 1.4715 into 10 raised to 5 newton meter square and the ps that is minus 6.5 mwc that is minus 6.5 into 9.81 into 1000 that is minus 0 0.637 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square now putting all the values both pressures manometric pressures we have uh, found assumed that we will be gate okay and we have put all the values what we get the axial force applied that is 1950.56 newton now the axial thrust due to change in moment is negligible hence it is not considered this axial thrust can be reduced up to 30 to 40 percent by providing the balancing holes which is a very important so you can reduce the weight also then actual force is a 0 0.4 times lesser a force times of uh, f axial so fa is equal to 70 780.22 newton now we have to calculate the radial forces so radial forces uh, occur due to three segments then uh, front shroud back shroud and hub because of these weights it can be radial forces can be occurred so first one so total radial forces we have uh, the addition of all these parameters that is fc fh plus w now what is the w w is the self weight of impeller so self weight of impeller we are considering three times of the weight of the back shroud from phg page number 1.1 the material for impeller is casting so we are considering gray cast iron grade 20 specific weight of the material of that gray cast iron is 0.072 newton per centimeter cube so the weight exact weight of the impeller self weight of impeller w is equal to 3 into specific weight into pi by 4 d2 square into 3 uh, thickness uh, thickness t so putting all the values what we get the weight self weight of impeller is equal to 11 uh, 112.8 newton that is 11.28 kg now next one centrifugal force due to unbalanced mass in actual practices there is a existence and unbalance approximately 0.5 times of mass which can be <coughs> pre-assumed as a caped at the tip of the impeller impeller unbalanced mass uh, actually whenever you are going for casting casting is not uh, properly uh, what you can say properly uh, same uh, material uh, stand nahi karta. so that's why in few cases uh, there is uh, material uh, casting ka hota hai, wo kam bhi pad sakta hai. so that's why that uh, 0 0.5 percent of mass approximately varies and it can be produced unbalanced in between uh, in that impeller segment so that is considered m0 is equal to 0 0.5 times divided by 100 multiplied by 11.28 
so the actual mass is 0 0.065 kg now centrifugal, centrifugal force of that unbalanced mass fc is equal to m0 r omega square a radius we know that is uh, 333 divided by 2 into 1000 so we can convert into the meter omega 2 pi n that is uh, 1500 divided by 60 bracket square so fc centrifugal force is 231.73 newton so that much force is generated now radial thrust due to the hydraulic pressure hf uh, f, f of h it is equal to k dash into b2 d2 into rho g h so k dash is equal to 0 0.1 So putting all the values we know the value of b2 t2 rho g h so fh that is a radial thrust due to the hydraulic pressure is equal to 114 newton so the total radial force which we have calculated in a newton fr is equal to fc plus fh plus w that is fr is equal to 458.5 newton now stress induced in impeller shaft so look at the uh, force analysis diagram as well as the mounted tag impeller shaft and bearing arrangement or you can say mounting diagram so in that uh, the initial distance between uh, these uh, parameters are uh, shown plus the different forces acting radially axially is also shown the material for shaft here we are considering is c45 now taking moment at the point c r1 into 200 is equal to 458.5 into 325 so r1 is equal to 745 newton and r2 is equal to 268.5 newton so maximum bending at the point of B look at here properly because it is in a center distance so maximum bending is occurred always at the center so B max is equal to 458.5 into 125 so maximum bending stress is equal to 57.3 into 10 raised to 3 Newton mm so motor torque <coughs> ninety five point five into ten raised to three newton mm which we have already calculated using the maximum uh, shear stress theory t equivalent is equal to t square into m max okay and based on that you can calculate the diameter of shaft so based on the maximum shear stress th shear stress theory you can can calculate the value of you know, diameter or tau okay so here the diameter is 25 putting all the values what we get uh, the induced stress is lesser than the design stress then maximum normal uh, shear stress theory so you can go in a both the manner you can directly uh, assume the diameter of the shaft or you can calculate based on the these values okay here we have already calculated uh, assumed the 25 mm diameter of the shaft which is previously we have seen so we are just checking for a maximum shear stress and maximum uh, normal stress theory so in both cases uh, our design is the same so hence all the included stresses are within the permissible limit so design is saved now next thing is to uh, select the suitable bearing for the particular application from the load diagram uh, the maximum radial load is r1 that is 745 newton and r2 is 286 newton uh, so we needed two different bearings uh, if we want you can directly calculate for r1 and you can use in a both segment okay so first roller bearing is required for impeller side and second one is dgbb 
DBU ball bearing which is required for motor set okay so design of roller bearing which is from impeller side considering the radial force 745 newton x is equal to 1 y is equal to 0 as axial forces are 0 as is service factor is 1.2 putting all the values p equivalent is equal to 89.4 kgf okay so selecting uh, needle type of uh, roller contact bearing and u2205 with the value of c and the diameters <coughs> here we are uh, directly selecting the value of c rather than the uh, rather than uh, selecting the value of c you can calculate the value of c and based on that you can select the uh, <coughs> bearing okay uh, I suggest everyone uh, first of all calculate the value of C based on that value uh, you can find out the bearing and after that you can go uh, follow this uh, next step that is a calculating of the life of bearing <coughs> so here as we know that a roller type of bearing K is equal to 10 by 3 and the value of c which is selected one is 1630 p equivalent is 89.4 uh, we need to calculate the exact light for 90 percent probability so l is equal to 15.95 into 10 to 3 revolutions okay so we need to calculate this into the hours. so equation uh, million revolutions is equal to 60 into <coughs> n into lh divided by 10 raised to 6 so putting all the values lh equal to 177.25 into 10 raised to 3 hours so that is sufficient now design of dgbb for motor side fr maximum force we are considering that is 745 newton x is equal to 1 y is equal to 0 s is equal to 1.2 so similarly calculating the equivalent load that is 894 uh, 89.4 make a correction of that uh, similarly we are selecting the dgbb bearing skf604 again i am suggesting all of you first of all calculate the value of c and based on that you can find out you can select the dgbb bearing okay so in the similar fashion we are calculating the life of bearing which is found as 6.175 into 10 raised to 3 hours so in the both manner uh, the life which is expected is uh, up to the marks and design is safe okay so that much is the design which you have to follow uh, for designing of any kind of centrifugal pump so main components are suction pipe delivery pipe impeller casing then uh, both shaft and bearings so these are the important components which we have to design in the design of centrifugal pump okay so thank you very much uh, if you have any doubt you just go through the both videos video first and video second so that you can <coughs> easily understand the process okay uh, if you have any doubt you can uh, call me and you can message me so that i can solve your doubt thank you thank you very much